Hi everyone, it's Grace from Esri. Today I will be showing you the top items that were added in ArcGIS Pro 3.6. This release focuses on productivity, performance, and quality. Notable improvements include the addition of in-app announcements, which include information on software updates, as well as geoprocessing run modes, which allows you to choose between running a geoprocessing tool on the geoprocessing thread or the foreground thread. You can now perform field calculations directly in the attribute table view using the new Calculate Field toolbar. Click the Calculate button to open the toolbar. If a field header is selected when clicking the button, that field automatically populates the target field. You can specify the calculation expression by typing and using the Add Fields to Expression menu. Python, Arcade, and SQL expressions are all supported. Click Calculate to run the tool and choose to save or discard your edits. You can uncheck Enable Undo to run the tool outside an edit session, which is faster and commits the calculation automatically. Selections, highlights, and filters are used by the Calculate Field toolbar and are indicated on the Calculate button. You can also open the menu to calculate all records without changing the selection or filter. The toolbar uses the Calculate Field geoprocessing tool to perform field calculations. You can find previous toolbar calculations in your geoprocessing history and see the 10 most recent expressions per language in the Recent Expressions menu. You can now use Layer Symbology to make selections. Right-click on a symbol class in the Contents pane to select, add to, and remove features from the current selection set. It's available for renderers that subset the layer into parts, such as unique values, graduated colors, and graduated symbols. Also for line and polygon layers, you can show selection feedback using the feature's geometry rather than the displayed symbol. This can be especially useful when editing features with cartographic symbols that use a reference scale. In this layout, the legend shows recorded bird sightings, but we can see that the trail's symbology is missing. Instead of scrolling through the contents pane to find it, in ArcGIS Pro 3.6, we can right-click the legend and click Add Layer. We can add any layer that is in the map, but not currently in the legend. Let's add the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service trails to the legend to complete the layout. In ArcGIS Pro 3.6, you can now search for colors and color schemes. To access this new ability, open the Symbology pane for your feature layer. On the Primary Symbology tab, click the Color Scheme drop-down menu and select More Color Schemes. Type a search term, select a color scheme from the results, and click OK. To find additional colors, right-click a symbol to open its color picker and click More Colors. Type a search term, select a color from the results, and click OK. You can search for colors or color schemes whenever a color picker or color scheme drop-down menu is available within ArcGIS Pro. In addition to productivity, performance, and quality improvements, there are also many new features available in ArcGIS Pro 3.6, including a redesigned model builder experience, a suitability model comparison interface, and the addition of Gaussian splat layers. The model builder experience has been redesigned in ArcGIS Pro 3.6. When you add elements such as tools or variables to a model, they are displayed as rounded rectangles. A gray color indicates that the model is not ready to run. An icon representing the data type of the variable is shown when adding new elements and in the pop-up list while connecting variables. The tool parameters are colored in when all of the required parameters are filled in, indicating that the model is ready to run. The grouping of nodes has also been redesigned. Progress bars are now shown when each tool is running. A green checkmark appears if the tool succeeds or a red X if it fails. Groups will display a corresponding red color if any tool within the group fails. Date and time values may seem simple until time zones are included. We can now transform all time zone aware values in a map into a single time zone. Much like spatial transformations, temporal transformations make it easier to do comparisons and proximities in time. Values are updated everywhere including in labels, reports, tables, pop-ups, and editing using the calendar control. 
The Compare Schema tool allows users to generate a comparison of two schema to identify differences between them. To create a comparison, first open the Compare Schema geoprocessing tool. Provide a base schema and a test schema for comparison. These schemas can be in the form of a geodatabase or an existing JSON or Excel schema report. The comparison is exported in the new dynamic HTML format, which is also now available in the Generate Schema Report tool. After running the tool, navigate to the HTML document to view the differences. Differences are categorized as either inserts, updates, or deletions, and can be viewed individually in the List tab or simultaneously in the Table tab. By default, the comparison report is set to display differences only. However, users can view all schema information or choose to ignore certain properties using settings. The new model comparison interface in the Suitability Modeler allows you to compare two models to analyze scenarios. Here are two suitability models for locating warning sirens in a flood-prone area. One locates standard sirens and the second locates more powerful sirens. We can see where the models are similar and different using predefined statistics. Here is the output from the hotspot analysis statistic showing green for similarities and red for differences between the models. Let's examine how the suitability values change between the models. The dark green areas are locations assigned high suitability in both models. The orange areas are where the stronger sirens increase the suitability from medium to high. Finally, let's examine the overlap between the final locations from the two models. The pink areas are where the standard sirens are located, and the purple is the stronger sirens. The standard sirens are focused around higher concentrations of people, while stronger sirens are spread out, reaching a wider audience. Use the model comparison interface again to try other scenarios. Gaussian splat layers are a new 3D layer type that can represent complex geometry in high fidelity. You can generate this data using ArcGIS Reality and visualize it in ArcGIS Pro. Visualize natural phenomena such as leaves on a tree or thin human-made structures such as power lines or railings. Effects such as steam, smoke, or window reflections can also be captured. Utilize inspection workflows to see debris piles or roof damage. There are many ways to enhance your 3D scenes using the new Gaussian splat layer. When access is enabled in your ArcGIS Online organization, you can choose the Google Photorealistic 3D base map from the base map gallery. This global mesh dataset combines both high quality textures and elevation values in one layer. Enhance your 3D scene by draping features on the mesh. For example, this is a trail layer showing conservancy trails in the hills of Redlands, California. Use the line of sight tool to see whether a hill blocks your view from a point on the trail. Alternatively, drape a polygon feature layer of zoning for city parcels and click in the scene to find zoning information for a building. This authoritative global dataset is new in ArcGIS Pro 3.6. Those were the top items for ArcGIS Pro 3.6. For a full list of everything new in this release, please read the What's New documentation for ArcGIS Pro.